Baruch Hashem, it is day number 261 of our daily study of Ramam Sefer Mitzvahs, and in the three chapters a day study track of Mishnah Teda, we are still in Hilchas Ritzeya, Hushmiras HaNefesh, that's laws of murder and protecting your personal safety, chapters 8, 9, and 10. And here are our mitzvahs for today. Positive Commandment 181 is the Egla Rufa, which literally translated means the decapitated calf. But that doesn't really help you unless you know exactly what it's referring to. It's a whole ceremony, a procedure, a ritual that was performed under very specific circumstances. If, God forbid, there was a murder victim, a slain corpse found lying in the field between two areas, two settled areas, meaning found in an uncorporated area, and we don't know who the murderer is, it's not known. So it was a mitzvah to establish what is the closest city. And by the way, even if it was obvious what the closest city was, it was still a mitzvah to do a procedure of measuring. And that was actually done by members of the high court from Yerushalayim, from uh, the Sanhedrin, the high court in Yerushalayim would come do that measuring. And then elders from the closest city would perform a ritual where they would slaughter a calf, a young cow, in a stream known as a Nachal Eson. And this procedure would uh, be a proclamation. In fact, they would actually verbally say that we did not send this murder victim out from our town without proper provisions, thereby obtaining atonement for the town where the murder victim originated from, or not where not necessarily where he lived, but where he had last been before he entered this uh, unincorporated area where, unfortunately, he met his uh, demise. The ritual seems shocking. Why is this animal uh, slaughtered, and specifically in the way that it's slaughtered? It's not shechita, it's not ritual slaughter like we use for consuming kosher meat or for sacrifices in the temple. Uh, we, we, we said a decapitated calf. They, they, they used a hatchet and they hit the calf from behind. What's the purpose of this? Well, first of all, the mitzvahs are Hashem's will. So it's not always possible to align our limited human thinking with the reasons for a mitzvah. However, I'll share with you one explanation from the Rambam, not from the Mishnah Torah or from the Sefer Mitzvahs, but from another work, the Meira HaNavuchim, which is the guide for the perplexed, which is a very different style of work. But over there, the Rambam speaks about this mitzvah, and he says that, you know, you, you hear this ritual, and it sounds so, I don't know, uh, shocking. And the Rambam says, yeah, that's the point, because there's a murderer at large. Remember, this is in the case where we don't know who the murderer is. And the, the ceremony itself will generate publicity and outrage and hopefully help that the, the murderer is solved. Okay. Negative commandment 309 is the prohibition against working the land near the Nachal Eson. I told you in the previous mitzvah, the Nachal Eson is the stream where they performed this ceremony. Um, the, it became prohibited afterwards to use the land in any productive way, not to use it for agriculture or anything useful after the procedure had been performed. And there's a, a symbolism to this, that because this person was murdered and now he can no longer be productive, so then this is put on display, by first of all, by, by taking the life of the calf, which displays that, but also by leaving that area where the procedure is performed to leave that as an unproductive place. And it, it's a reminder that this person's productivity was robbed from him. Okay, now, negative commandment 298, this is a different topic. This is not about Egla Rufa anymore, but it's on the topic of, you remember the name of this of these halachas is Reitzeach Ushmiras Anafish. So the Reitzeach part means murder. Shmiras Anafish means 
looking after personal safety. So the Rambam puts mitzvahs that have to do with personal safety over here. This is not dealing with murder or even with manslaughter, which we touched upon uh, in previous days, but this is just personal safety stuff. Okay, negative commandment 298 is um, not to allow something dangerous in your property, whether that means in your personal property, your, your home, or a community has a responsibility to remove from their from their city any dangerous snare or pitfall or something that a person could get hurt upon. Positive commandment 184 is sort of a corollary to that, and that is the positive commandment to actively remove any uh, dangers. And the source of this mitzvah is in the verse which describes the building of a guardrail called a mica. Um, but our sages explain that it's not limited to simply building the guardrail around uh, if someone has a roof where people could walk and they could fall off of that roof, God forbid, so there has to be a, a guardrail around the, the roof. But it's a general commandment to remedy any situation that could be a danger to, uh, to people's safety. Okay, those are our mitzvahs for today. We will see you tomorrow for more, God willing, and uh, we are going to be completing these laws, and with that, the entire Sefer Nezikin. So we'll see you then, God willing.